arguably the best NHL team in the league comes into Rogers Arena looking for another victim of hockey because they've been really hot recently and the Vancouver Canucks have been really not recently. A few other teams in the tank got wins, I believe, so this was really an opportunity for the Vancouver Canucks to take a stranglehold on the tanking race, and everybody came into this game thinking, okay, it's Boston, and we're Vancouver. Arizona just beat the Edmonton Oilers 1-0 earlier today, so this is our opportunity to really showcase our strengths in being able to tank. We need to lose this one in regulation. But... Two minutes into the first period, Louis Erickson says, well, nah, I'm good, because Alexander Edler has the puck, he takes a shot, there's a big rebound, and Louis Erickson is there, he tries to bang away at it, it goes off to the side, Daniel Sedin is there, he throws it on the backhand, and Louis Erickson, on a really weird angle, is able to just tap it, and it goes right in. That's two minutes into the game, Louis Erickson starts things off fresh, I swear, this happens like all the time. Whenever the Canucks are not in a position where we're like, yep, you guys need to win. Whenever they're in a position where you're like, yeah, you're, we're going to lose really badly. Louis Erickson always scores in the first like few seconds of the game. It happens all the time. It's weird. And this was his ninth of the season. Of course, that's not enough to satisfy what people would say is arguably the worst contract signing of the Vancouver Canucks in the past few years. But it's still nice to see the guy score, right? Right, especially because this one was a Daniel Sedin assist, who, speaking of, later in the period, 10 minutes and 54 seconds into the first period, Henrik Sedin is there, he's there on the far hash marks on the right side, sends it out through the slot, it bounces a little bit, and Thomas Vanek, Vanek, who is arguably one of the best players of the 2000s, he took the puck, he grabs it, does a move or two to try to get around the defenders, and he's got some space, so he shoves it through the legs of the other guy, and Daniel Sedin on his offside is able to shoot it into the open net to Karask, befuddled at that shot. Daniel Sedin's got one, and then the next one, which was just like a minute later, this one is from Anders Nielsen. This is his first assist of the game of the season, actually, so that automatically puts him at more points than a few of the other guys that we have on our roster. Oops, don't tell anyone I said that. But Troy Stetcher grabs the puck, the side of the net, and he's being pursued. And Stetcher, with his small 5'9 stature and quick shiftiness, is able to circle around the net and get through a few Boston guys who are trying to forecheck on him. He does a good job at spacing himself out away from the Boston forecheckers in order to give himself the best opportunity to make a play, and that is exactly what he did here. He sends the puck up to a Bo Horvat who comes in with speed, dekes around the guy, goes through the defender, and he just roofs it. Bo, man. Oh my goodness. Bo Horvat. Such a key player on this team, and of course we missed him. This was his 15th of the year. Potentially could have had more this season if he didn't get injured for a few weeks. But it's beautiful seeing this. And this was kind of the moment where everyone was freaking out like, Yep, this is our game. This is our game. The Canucks aren't losing this one, hopefully. But this is our game. And later on in the period, Sven Berchi gets one. This one was... I don't even want to talk about this one. Berchi takes a shot. It's, like, blocked. And then the rebound comes up. It hits a Boston guy, and it goes in. People were saying on Twitter, yeah, this needs to be Besser's goal. Elliot said that this one has to be Besser's goal, too. But it, it currently stands on NHL.com and everywhere else. Yeah, this was Sven Berchi's 13th of the year unassisted. So, yeah... Yeah, I guess. Um, the second period, we got ourselves one goal. This one was Nick Dowd from Derek Pouliot and Jake Vertanen. Of course, if you have a Vertanen primary assist, you know what that means. It means that that assist was an assist formulated by Jake Vertanen cutting right into the zone. He comes in with speed, and he dekes the puck a little bit to the front, and he goes. He just goes right to the front of the net, and Nick Dowd is there to tap in the rebound. And by this point, Tuka Rask, he's already gone, and the Vancouver Canucks are just here like, yep, we just did that, we've got five goals straight on the Boston Bruins, who have been red hot recently, and who totally did not expect us to be 
getting this amount of success against them. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. And, of course, Boston, they get another one later in the third, but Louis Erickson gets his 10th of the year later as well. This one was an interesting goal. It was short-handed, and Louis Erickson with another shot. This one, it finds its way loose, and it's going towards the point, but Derek Pouliot is there like, nope, and then he slap passes it over to Erickson on the far side, and Erickson with a one-timer gets it through Kudobin, and that one was just like, you know, it's, it's Erickson's 10th of the year, so yeah, that's pretty good too. But the Vancouver Canucks, with this win, we have a few more points, we are 6th last now, which was, I mean, it could have been better a little bit earlier, but this game had a few individual performances that I was really proud of. For example, the players that we have on the ice, we got ourselves Daniel Sedin, Louis Erickson, and Derek Pouliot, all with two points. We got Anders Nielsen, who really did keep the Vancouver Canucks in this one. The score should have been like 5-5 during the second period, but Anders Nielsen was the reason that wasn't the case. The Boston Bruins in this one, 18 shots in the first period, 8 shots in the second period, 19 shots in the third period, 45 in total, the Vancouver Canucks had 24, and the Vancouver Canucks win this one 6-1. to one. Anders Nielsen with 44 saves on 45 shots, on a night where he wasn't really supposed to actually play, he stood in his head. And granted, Boston... They didn't let off the gas pedal a single moment in this game. Despite the fact that they were losing 6-1, they were still having really good opportunities in our zone in the third period, and their opportunities were really good consistently. They had 45 shots on net, one of them went in, but the amount of shots that they had that didn't go on net, they had a lot of wide shots and block shots, it was really strong. Like, this was just another good offensively minded game for the Boston Bruins. It's just that the Vancouver Canucks converted on their opportunities when given. And it's apparent here. The Vancouver Canucks, if you take a look at players who had really good plus minus ratings, Biega and Derek Pouliot were plus fours. So that's a good pairing, I guess. I mean, Biega was pointless in this game, but he was a plus four, which is really good. And overall, I've been really impressed with Alex Biega as he's been playing on the Canucks roster. Playing with Pouliot in this game, I think it was really beneficial for him, because it allowed both of those guys to be able to do what they're really capable of. Of course, we got the other defensemen on the team, Philip Holm and Ben Hutton as well, who were both scratched. Philip Holm, I'm, I'm just on the free home trade. I want Philip Holm to play... I want him to play so badly. Ben Hutton, I couldn't care less about, because he's not really that good anymore. If we trade him, then cool, but like, really, Philip Holm. I want Philip Holm to play. But at the same time, I don't want to take away ice time from a good pairing like Biega and Pouliot. Which is why I think we should trade Good Branson as soon as possible. So, yeah. However, though, if Pouliot does continue to play, like, really well, I think he definitely could see a spot on this team going over in the long future. If we're being honest here, I can actually envision him playing on a line with Troy Stetcher. Like, a guy like Troy Stetcher, who's also a right-handed shot, who's also capable of moving the puck really well, and that was exemplified greatly on the Bo Horvat goal. I think that'd be a good pairing as things go forward. But of course, because we got guys like Ed Branson and Delzato and all that on the team, it, it's... We, we can't do that. And Philip Holm, he's not playing yet. But really... They did a lot of talking on this broadcast about Tanev, and Edler, and like, Good Branson, and Hutton, and like, even Twitter. Like, there's a lot of updates going on about teams inquiring about guys like Good Branson, Hutton, Tanev, and even Alex Edler. So, I hope we do something. I hope the Vancouver Canucks do something. I've been hearing Toronto's name pop up a lot in terms of Chris Tanev. Like, recently, that's been the big craze. Toronto and Chris Tanev. What would the Leafs be willing to give up for Chris Tanev? And it's crazy. Like, this is such an interesting conversation to have at this moment. And it's like, a year ago, nobody would have envisioned having this talk. Like, everyone was expecting the Vancouver Canucks to be sort of good this year, especially with the big surgeons of Brock Besser. But Bo Horvat going down and all the other guys going down, that really did change everything. And now we're in the position where people are asking us about Alex Edler. So yeah. But, who cares? Because this game was a pretty good game. 
And despite the fact that they were basically talking about how our defense is not going to be the same come post-trade deadline, this was a good game. Besser had zero points, but people argue that that goal from Sven Berchi unassisted should have been a Besser goal. Dowd had a goal. That was really nice. Vertanen with an assist. Eriksson, two goals. Daniel Sedin, two points. Thomas Vanek, a really nice assist, as well as Henrik Sedin. Berchi with a goal. Horvat with a goal. Pouliot with two points, Edler with a point, and Troy Stetcher with a fantastic assist, Anders Nielsen, 10 out of 10 power play shots saved, that was really good by him, the Bruins were absolutely stoned on the power play, because they had 5 shots, and they converted on none of them. The Vancouver Canucks, on the other hand, zero power play opportunities, and Ian McIntyre on Twitter actually talking about something really interesting, I'll read you this tweet that he tweeted out. I suspect Travis Green has seen enough of referee Gord Dwyer, who also worked their last game in San Jose. The Vancouver Canucks have had one power play in 110 minutes, and Dwyer just stopped play to call an unspo bench miner from across the ice. And really, there's nothing you can do about that. Some referees are total... You could fill in the blank right there. I just had to reclaim myself. But you, could... you can't argue with that. You can't argue with that. I just hope we don't get this guy in the future. But really, the Vancouver Canucks 6-1, that's, that's a good game. It's a good game. It should have been Team Tank tonight, considering the fact that Arizona won one nothing against the Edmonton Oilers earlier, but it wasn't. We got room for a few moments of happiness, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Plus, you guys are gaming, and bye. <laughs>